All right, what's going on? You listen to King Cam and June Bay podcast, and June Bay means message and the ex excavations of Petrie revealed in Egypt the remains of a distinct race that preceded the historic Egyptians, page 15. Man, the excavation of Petrie revealed in Egypt the remains of a distinct race that preceded preceded the historic Egyptians. All right, what's going on? You listen to King Cam and Jubei podcast and Jubei means message. Today's message is chapter one, the empire's age and scope. Yeah, the empire's age and scope. I am very happy about this one. Let's get into it. All right, this is an introduction to African history gear just for you. This is summer school. This is the very first session of summer school. And this is just for you and is designed to foster a life of learning. And uh, this is, this will happen once a week. This is an introduction to African history. It's going to happen once a week. And uh, we're going to go over a few readings on the continent. Are there any other civilizations outside of Kemet? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. And we're going to get into Kush, Sudan, ancient Meroe. Let's go. All right. Ancient Kush. Now, on this map, on this map, it shows the the kingdom of Kush uh, towards the, we have, of course, Kemet, and then we have Sudan, we have Kush down here, and uh, we're going to deal with this. This is a vast kingdom. This is a large kingdom. Uh, you see in the south, we have Khartoum at the very south that connects the blue and the white Nile, and then it goes north to Meroe, and the, and, and the, the cataracts, and and uh, Napata and El Karu and so many other places. We're gonna we're gonna talk about these kingdoms. I think this is about time to to highlight Nubia. We spent a lot of time in Kemet, which rightfully so, but we have to understand that Nubia. We're gonna establish the fact that Nubia is the mother of Kemet. Let's go. This is the book. This is our textbook for summer school, the wonderful Ethiopians of the ancient uh, Kushite Empire. Very thorough. And this book was written, originally published in 1926, about to be 100 years ago, by our sister Drusilla Dungey Houston. This is a groundbreaking work. This, ha this was happening 100 years ago, and I think it's about that time that we get into it. This is the book. I have it. You need to check it out. Link uh, is in the description. As an Amazon affiliate, I earn from qualifying purchases at no additional cost to you. But if you're going to study, let's study. Let's learn together. Let's go. Now, here are the essential questions. What evidence is presented to support the claim that human civilization originated in Africa? Next question. How does Sister Houston challenge your essential views of history in this chapter? And what were some key contributions what were some key contributions of ancient African people to early human development mentioned in this chapter? All right. This is the very first quote. This, this is a banger. This, this establishes the whole thing. The excavations of Petrie revealed in Egypt remains of a distinct race that preceded, that preceded, which means came before the historic Egyptian. Got the page number right there, page 15. All right. Here's some evidence. The early civilization, it was higher than that of the later dynasty. She comes out swinging. The early civilization was higher than that of the later dynasties. What do we mean? The earlier cultures, Sudan had a higher culture than Kemet. The mother, then the daughter. All right, the pure art represents, according to her, an old race that fills all the background of the prehistoric ages. This is page page fifteen. She does not waste any time at all. The ancients called this pioneer race, which lit, we're going to get right to. I'm I'm very excited about this. The ancients called this pioneer race, which lit the torch of art and science. Kushite Ethiopians. 
Okay, the founders of prime, uh, primal, primeval cities and civilized life. Now, this book is dated. Okay, but the scholarship is there. Okay, the scholarship is there. All right. Now, some more evidence. The achievements of this race in early ages were a result of cooperation. Cooperation. That is Ubuntu. Okay, that we are working together. We are one. We're doing this together. Remember, Kushite culture is a African culture. Just like we've established the fact that uh, Kemet is an African civilization. Kemetic culture is African culture. Kushite culture is an African culture. So they are going to do things together. There are There will be a group of different tribes and ethnic groups coming together to build Kush. They reached the true zenith of democracy. And so Africa has always had some form of democracy. Okay. Uh, it, it was always there. It has been established thousands upon thousands of years. And the skill for hands, what did they do? What did they build? The skill for hands raised uh, cyclopean walls, dug out mighty lakes, and laid imperishable roads that have endured throughout the ages. What have they done as a civilization? They developed a infrastructure. It wasn't just a campaign slogan or something cute. Or they say, hey, free taxes or no, you know, no taxes at all, that kind of thing. They did the work. Our leaders, yes, we have to have a catchphrase or whatever. But in a minute, you're going to have to dig out lakes, lay imperishable roads. We're going to have to do something for the community. Pay attention. This was their testimony. This was their work. Okay, modern writers seem... Uh, of superficial re research either being unaware of these facts or knowing purposely to ignore them. This is the very first page of chapter one. She's coming out swinging. Sister Houston is playing no games. Okay? She, she's not playing and I, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okay? Some more evidence. Okay? Who was Egypt's teacher? This is the question she's asking, okay? General history informs us that when the, when the curtain of history was lifted, the civilization of Egypt was uh, hoary with age, okay? It was a culture that must have developed from thousands of years of growth. Why is the scholarship of the world so silent as to what lay behind historic Egypt? We know about Kemet. We know about all these things, the four golden ages. Shout out to the fam. But for some reason, it gets really quiet <clears throat> when it comes down to um, the culture further south. No nation throughout the ages has an Athene sprung full-fledged into knowledge of all the arts and sciences. In other words, she's saying nobody just came out 100%. You had to learn from something. They had to get it from somewhere. Okay, the story of what lay behind Egypt fascinated the whole ancient world. The ancient world wanted to know. The culture of Egypt did not originate upon the lower Nile. Who was their teacher? Let's answer the question. Who was their teacher? She says it was the ancient Kushite Empire of Ethiopians, which Weighty authorities tell us who uh, ruled over three continents for thousands of years. Thousands of years. We have to understand. Shout out to uh, Brother Mo. He asked me a question. We're going to answer that question about who was the Scorpion King. He was a Nubian. He was from Kush. But we're going to get more into that in the coming weeks. But the authorities tell us they ruled over three continents for thousands of years. So if uh, the Scorpion King, King uh, Menes or Narma, came from the south and united Kemet, he had to come from somewhere. Okay, he had to come from that culture. Bring it in. So if the dynastic period began about, say, about 5,000 B.C., Kush was older than that. Yeah. 
It's evidence. It's right there. And when I think about it, when they when they was doing the excavation work in the fifties and sixties uh, concerning the Swan Dam, they they found a lot of work and a lot of items in Nubia, in the Swan area. Okay. So should the world wait longer? Should the world wait longer to test the truth of the ancient uh, witnesses? Now, besides, she said, besides the gigantic achievements, uh, they compare to the petty conquest of Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Napoleon. This phased into significance, into insignificance. This is what she said. By comparison to the Kushite Empire, what these folk were doing, was minor was minor there seems to be a fear to tell about these ancients who built mighty cities the ruins of which extend in uninterrupted succession around the shores of the mediterranean sea traces of this empire works appearing to have been wrought by giants she's coming out swinging y'all giants Okay. Now, Ethiopia, she says, was the source of all that Egypt knew and transmitted to Greece and Rome. There it is. Who was the mother? Cush, the daughter, Kemet, then Greece and Rome. Okay. We got to look behind this the old empire, the old race, as you would call it. Okay, we were accustomed to think Ethiopia was a restricted country in Africa, but this is not true. Okay, but yeah, Ethiopia was the source of all that Egypt knew. Like, like the recipe for dinner or whatever, you just didn't come up there with, you had to get that from somebody or, so, or, or, or a book, right? Now, how was it done? Through the language, the Hematic language um, spread wider than the Semitic language because it was a baton to language. Semitic language um, was only in a certain area. But we talk about the Nile River Valley. That is 4,100 miles. That is a lot of land, a lot of people. So this was transmitted. The culture, the knowledge, the science was transmitted through the language okay and she mentions a few people uh russell mueller uh the author of biblical geography hg wells um so uh, ross mueller reveals the ancient land of cush was very widespread and powerful empire shows the hebrew scholars called cush all the countries in that zone in that area so cush was not just relegated to say the Sudan area, it was that whole Nile River Valley. Okay, H.G. Wells says the Hematic language, of course, uh, spread much wider than the varied language and more varied language than the Semitic or Aryan in the ancient days. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's, let's continue. Now, Ethiopia, she, like I said, she was not joking with these people. Ethiopia, first established country, first to establish the worship of God, first established laws and government. She was a plan. The basic stones of that wonderful dominion were equality, temperance, industry, intelligence, and justice. Ethiopia was already handling business eons before everybody else, even Kemet. Okay. And so we have to understand that Ethiopia, Kushite Empire, was the first to establish all these things, even the worship of the, the hidden one, the one that is not known. Hmm? She continues, Ethiopia, the gods and goddesses of the Greeks, Romans were were but kings and queens of the Kushite Empire of the Ethiopians. Man, look. 
our regular folk, basically, our people that that lead us was revered and respected to to such a high regard that they became their gods. Think about it. In Europe, they they have Zeus and Athena. All in. We up there saying, "Oh man, that's that's Joseph. We know him." Because they did so much great and wonderful things, they had to respect it. The gods and goddesses of the Greeks were but borrowed kings and queens of the Kushite Empire. Borrowed. So marvelous had, had their achievements in primitive ages and in latter days they were worshipped as immortals. Yeah. They was worshipped. They was out there in India, Egypt, and Ethiopia. The legends became legendary. Yeah. They, the legends became legendary. And so the first inventors of any art among the greatest benefactors of mankind and the bold steps, uh, they take from known to unknown, from blank ignorance to discovery are equal to any subsequent steps of progress. Ethiopia established a lot of things. And so they, and he said they were this page 20, they were emphatically the monument builders of the plains of Shinar, the Valley of the Nile from Meroe to uh, Menifer or Memphis. In Southern Arabia, they erected wonderful edifices. They were responsible for the monuments that dot Southern Siberia and in America. Shout out to the fam that's doing their studies in America. In America, along the Valley of the Mississippi, down to Mexico and Peru, their images and monuments stands as voiceless witnesses. Ethiopia, Ethiopia, and the foundations of ancient religions, mythology, institutions, customs, all had the same source. He considered the Egyptian and Chaldean civilizations very old, but the culture and political organization of Ethiopia was much older. Yeah. And how old? Now we're going to get into the Sanskrit. That's evidence in Sanskrit. Wilford, the student of the literature of India, found that Ethiopia was often mentioned. The Sanskrit writings prove that in remote ages of Ethiopia were among the most powerful, richest, and most enlightened part of the world. People in the writing in India saying that. We're not saying... We're saying that. We're not saying that Dr. Ben is saying that. We're not saying Dr. Clark was saying that. No, the people in India are saying that. The people in Greece and Rome are saying that. There are evidences concerning Ethiopia everywhere. Before Kemet. Let's continue. Yeah, so. According to prehistoric nations of the old, the oldest recorded traditions, Kushite colonies were established in the Nile Valley. How old? It established not later than 7,000 BC or 8,000 BC or even earlier. So I, I, I mentioned the fact that uh, the Scorpion King, Menes, established uh, came around, say, 5,000, maybe, I, I don't know the, the date, 5,000 BC, and I said to Kush, Ethiopia was older. Here it is. Here it is. And this is by scientific day. We're not talking about the culture because that can be a lot earlier, like they said, a lot earlier. Ethiopia, which existed for long ages before its wonderful power was broken, cannot be limited to the short chronological period of history. This sister is not playing with y'all. This is just the first chapter. Can't wait to see what else he says. The great period of Kushite control had closed many ages prior to Homer. Although separate communities remained not only in Egypt, but in Southern Arabia, Phoenicia, and elsewhere, prehistoric nations. 
uh, pages uh, 95 and 96. So she is citing a book called Prehistoric Nations. Now, even though Egypt it was established and Chaldea became separate, the Kushites were still unrivaled. 3500 to 3000 BC, the kingdom divided again. Of course, we have the flood and things like that. But now, after the rise of Assyria, the Ethiopians above Egypt became central representatives of that power. And that power was exercised as a world power for thousands of years. So before Egypt became the world power, Ethiopia was the world power. That's pretty interesting. So we have the Sanskrit evidence. We have evidence in time. Now, what about in Arabia? Hmm. What about them? <clears throat> the Persian area, Yemen, and so on. <clears throat> stories of Arabian nights were stories of events that occurred during the decline of the ancient Ethiopian Empire. So, the stories of Arabian nights were a series of events that occurred at Ethiopia's decline. Yeah, of course, give or take minus the the jinns and the fairies and so on, but this was a Kushite story being told in Arabia. Hmm. The scenes uh, represented India, Persia, Arabia. Now check out Bald Baldwin's work, Prehistoric Nations. All of these nations at this time, which was eons ago, you know, you can disagree or disagree. Make sure you comment, though. India was part of that. Hindu Kush, Persia, Arabia were all Kushite uh, colonies or empires. All right. Now. Empires in the scope from the remotest times to the present, the Ethiopians have been the most celebrated yet most mysterious of the nations man this is chapter one y'all this is the very beginning this is like 15 small chapters quick reads but i'm very excited about this okay so what's next y'all what's next we're going to discuss chapter two for more about ancient kush check out home team san kofa pan-african series dr ben uh, Yahya Sabaka, he's not on here uh, on this one, but shout out to him, he's doing a great work, uh, great job. Uh, Dr. Uh, John Henry Clark, of course, and the African History page, AE Learning. But here's some more books, I'm going to put the link in the description. Af uh, the Ancient African Civilizations, Chris and Axum is Good, Black Genesis, that talks about uh, Napta Playa, that talks about that. The prehistoric origins of ancient Egypt. Temples and tombs of ancient Nubia. And here it is, prehistoric nations. If you, you say, where's the book? Where is it? There it is. I'm going to put the link in the description. The prehistoric nations by John D. Baldwin. Okay. We just got to talk about chapter one, uh, the empire's age and scope. You just listen to King Cam with Jubei podcast. And I will talk to you later.